Hi, my name is Trent Shelton. This is my Success Magazine interview. Question number one, how do you define the work you do to the new people you meet along with the industry you're in? Well, when I meet people and they ask me what I do, I just tell them I'm in the service industry, um, the service industry of helping people, uh, helping people change their life and better their life and grow their life. Just like you would go somewhere, you know, uh, to Home Depot if you want to fix your, your house or make it better or improve your you know, whatever, you know, you go place to get tools and, you know, I'm a place where you can come get tools to help better your life and as well as the industry that I'm in. So uh, we're providing tools for people um, that they can use in their way to help better their life. Number two, what changes have you observed in this industry since you began? Well, I started in personal development. I didn't even know I was in it, to be real with you, <laughs> but I started in 2009 and, you know, when I started, I would say maybe it just wasn't on my radar, but I didn't see a lot of people, you know, sharing their story or a lot of people in this space. And now I see everybody doing it. And to me, which is beautiful because, you know, everybody has a story. You know, I, I think personal development and thought leaders aren't just reserved for a certain type of people and say, oh, this is all the thought leaders in the world. I think everybody's a thought leader. Um, it just depends on how you embrace your past and use your past to help grow people. But uh, yeah, that's the thing that I've seen. I've just seen, you know, a, a big influctuation of, you know, people becoming motivational speakers and authors and thought leaders, et cetera. Uh, three, in what ways is your line of work the same as it when you began? It's exactly the same. You know, I came into this space just want to rehab people's life and it hasn't changed today, period. You know, my whole thing is I want to help you take responsibility over your life. I want to help you know that there's a you inside of you, which is the greatest you that you haven't even met yet. And that's been my mission since 2009, just to impact the life. Every time I go live to impact the life, every stage I'm speaking on just to impact the life, every you know, post on Instagram just to impact the life. And the result of that is impacting millions of lives. You know, So it's never been about numbers for me. It's never been about, oh, the algorithm. It's all about just literally you know, sharing my heart and uh, sharing the tools that I know will help people. Number four, 94% of, of millennials report commitments to their, to their self-growth. And millennials say that they're willing to spend an average of nearly 300 per month on self-improvement. Why do you believe this field is so strong now? Well, people realize, like, and no knock against college. Like, I went to college. I graduated with a uh, degree, speech communications, bachelor's degree at Baylor University. Um, but just to be real, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. Like, I started off in business and I went to psychology. Then I found myself in communications. And I would be lying if I said, you know, I wanted to be a speaker at that point in my life. It just happened to work out like that. But I think a lot of people, you know, are going to college and they're spending all this money on college and not knowing, you know, what they want to do. Or it just costs a tremendous amount of money to be able to learn. And it takes five years, four years, six years, some people 10 years. Now, I mean, you can go to a conference in three days. Now you can purchase uh, a course that might cost you, you know, $300 compared to spending 30,000. And you can learn the same tools that much faster. So I think the accessibility is making people realize like, wow, like if I just invest in myself right now for this year or for, you know, these two years, I can get the same like amount of knowledge and information as I would, you know, going to college and no knock against college. Like that's, you know, for some people who want to do it. But I think, you know, self-education is becoming a new norm in this society. Number five, more, more people are joining the industry as social media continues to make the barrier to entry lower. How do you expect this to affect the industry and its consumers? Um, it can be a positive or a negative. It just depends on the person joining. Like I said before, I think it's beautiful. I think everybody has a story. I think, you know, I remember when I started, I started on social media. I started back in 2009. Like I'm a social media baby, like Facebook birthed my career in this space. So I know the power of social media, but also, you know, social media is a tool and it depends on how that person uses the tool. So it can be a positive thing or it can be a negative thing. It can be a negative thing because now you have people who really aren't about that life, who are just talking and not living it, who are selling people dreams and they don't, they're not, they're selling people dreams that they haven't even bought yet. 
and it makes a bad experience to the consumer. And now the consumer is like, oh, this whole space is like this because of a few bad apples. So it could be a positive or a negative thing. It just depends on the person. So I hope it's more positive people that come into this space from a more authentic place and just want to help people because uh, that's what we need. Uh, number six, in what ways does changing technology affect the way you do your work? Uh, it doesn't. You know, I mean, obviously we'll adjust as technology changes. I think technology is awesome because I think the more powerful technology gets, the more you're able to connect with people in a whole different way, in a faster way, in a more efficient way. So as technology grows, we just grow with it. Number seven, how do you believe consumers in the general public view this industry? What are the positive and negatives in their minds? It's, it's, it's split. I mean, if you're into personal development, if you grew up reading books, if you know, your parents had you in this environment, you understand it. But I understand it from a point too where I wasn't in personal development. I didn't know anybody in this space. Like my personal development was Lil Wayne, hip hop, <laughs> Master P, like that's what I grew up on. And so I had, like growing up, I had my things, oh, these people are just trying to use people. But I was making statements before I ever experienced it. So once I started experiencing this thing, I mean, in this field, should I say, um, actually, let me re I'm gonna redo that one. <laughs> Uh, number seven, how do you believe consumers in the general public view this industry? What are the positive and negatives? Uh, it's both. I've been on both sides of the fence. I mean, I think it's a positive because people realize like, wow, I can literally get a ton of information like quickly, like literally at the at the like tip of my thumbs and fingertips. I'm a video away from actually finding the tools to change my life. I'm a course away. I'm a conference away that's going to change my life forever. So it's a positive thing if you have been in this space, if you understand that. But a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people have been taken advantage of. A lot of people like myself, when I first started, I wasn't in the personal development. So I was like, I'm not going to no conference. I'm not, I'm not picking up no books. But that was my lack of knowledge. And so I think the more people are informed and the more people experience it, uh, the more positive outcomes are going to come with this industry. Um, number eight, how do you establish and maintain credibility with your audience? I live it. I live it, breathe it, be it. And I'm honest. I'm open. I'm a human being. I love to say I humanize myself. You know, I don't know if it's because my whole entire life, not trying to pat myself on the back, but just being a professional athlete and out like a, a star athlete in high school and college, I've always had attention. And if you know me, you know that attention is something that I don't seek. It actually, I'm an introvert. So it actually makes me uncomfortable at times. And so I'm not in this space to like, oh, look at me, I'm the guru, I know everything, and I'm at the top of the mountain telling you how to get up here. That's not my thing. The reason that I feel like I, I maintain credibility and connection with my audience, um, I think maybe better than anybody in the world, I'll go out and say that, is I'm willing to connect with my audience in the most genuine, authentic way. So like at an event, you won't see me hiding behind the stage, you know, and you won't see me if, if going up the elevator route, like, and nothing against that. Like, I get it. Sometimes when you're at an event, you need to rest. If you're doing multiple days speaking, I understand that. But if I have the time to go connect with people, I'm going to connect with people. I'm not going to have security. I literally, I will sit in the audience of events that I'm speaking at and actually become the consumer and learn from people. And so um, I think people feel that. I think people see that I'm not at the top of the mountain. Maybe I've been there, and I'm but I'm back down with you and like, hey, I got my struggles too. And I think the more you can be open about your life, and that's the beautiful thing about social media right now, you can show people as much as you want to show, you can show people your life. And I think people, when they see that, oh, they do the same things I do, or they have the same struggles I have, it builds more credibility and they trust you more. And they're open to uh, your, your advice more because they, have, they know you have been through it. It's kind of like this, like, I would rather somebody give me a map that's hiked the trail than somebody give me a map that thinks they know the way, right? And so by actually humanizing yourself, as I like to call it, by showing people that you're a human being, um, it's like, okay, this person's been where I've been. They understand me, and so I can relate to them. Number nine, what do you consider the, to be the greatest single threat to this industry? Um, I'm sure there's a lot, but just the one that pops up in my mind is, is people not being real. 
people not being authentic, like people faking it till they make it, people trying to take advantage of people just to get rich, right? Just to, to grow their own personal like lifestyle. And I think that's whack because you have to ask yourself, are you really in it to help people? And the thing that I've asked myself and that I would challenge every person in this space, like if they took away everything, like likes, followers, money, uh, all these things, they took it away, would you still be doing this? And my answer is absolutely. You know, I did it when I wasn't getting paid to speak. I did it when nobody was watching my videos and I continue to do it. So I think the biggest threat to this space is people just coming in this space, looking at it as like, oh, this is a way to make money. So I'm going to portray something that I'm not. I'm going to fake it till I make it. Right. I'm going to be I'm going to talk about the things that I'm not living. I'm going to sell people dreams that I ain't even bought myself. And the more people that come into this space like that, uh, the more distrust will happen with the consumers. And, you know, it's like anything else. Like I said before, people are going to be like, oh, everybody's like this. Every I, I was done wrong by this person. It's like getting in a bad relationship. Right. You get in a bad relationship with one person. You think everybody's like that. It's like you make people pay for mistakes they didn't make. And I think that's the biggest threat, at least in my eyes, to this space is uh, un unauthentic, not real people coming into this space. Um, they really don't care to help people. You know, it's a lot of service preaching, which are which is great because we are of service. Like you should be a service as a human being. But it's a lot of service preaching, but it's really wrapped around selfishness, because my question is, if you don't get what you want to get from it, are you still going to do it? And I think for some people, the answer is no. And so if you can say yes from an authentic place, like this is what I care about from my heart. Um, I think this is what is this is what's going to make this industry uh, grow and even be more beautiful than it is now. Number 10, what's the greatest opportunity? The greatest opportunity is for everybody to share their story. I think that's beautiful because now people realize what they've been through, the struggles that they've been through have purpose. And so I think the more we can get people doing that, the more we can help each other, the more we can come together, the more we can make this world a better place. 11, in what ways do you still wish you were better at connecting with your audience? Um, that's tough because I feel like I'm pretty good, but I guess if I could just be picky, I wish I could respond to every single message. I wish I could, like me personally, like not someone I hire, <laughs> me personally. You know, I wish I could respond to every single message, help every single person. I wish I had the stamina for it. Um, I wish I had the time for it, but unfortunately I don't. And things like that bother me a little bit, even though they, they shouldn't because I know I'm a human being and that's impossible, but I care so much because I always think about, man, there's one person in my inbox on Facebook out of 10,000 messages that really need me right now. And I'm, able, I'm not able to find that message because there's so many. So I wish I had a way that me personally could connect with every single person. Number 12, what is the ultimate goal for the consumer? To rehab their life, to change their life, to better their life. I want the consumer to know that they're enough. I want the consumer to take responsibility and realize that it all starts with, with them when they look in the mirror. That's the overall goal as far as coming from what I do. Number 13, how do you feel about collaborations with other PD professionals? Are they your competition or allies? And how did you develop this viewpoint one way or the other? Definitely not my competition. Uh, I think that's silly, to be honest with you. And I think if you're viewing people as competition, it's like, why are you in this space? Like, I get the whole business stuff, but it's like, to me, I'm loyal to, to helping people. So if you're really loyal to helping people, it doesn't matter where that person gets help from. And so I might not be an expertise in a certain field somebody hits me up, but I might say, hey, go check out Rachel. Hey, go check out Tom. Like, I'm quick to do those things because it would be selfish of me to not provide the help to someone it's like, it's like somebody's, you know, sick and you have like the prescription, like, you know, who has, and you're like, nah, I'm not going to give them the prescription because they're going to get more business than me. Like, think about that. That's super selfish. So like I've collabed with plenty of people. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I'm open to collab with, with doesn't matter to me because we're not in this to, for competition. We're in this to really for connection with each other and help build each other up. So yeah, I don't see no competition. I think we're all in this together, man. And 
I just know I'm, a, I'm one person. I can't change the world by myself. But if I can bring a force of people together, right, like the transformers <laughs> of the personal development space, you know, like it's like going to conferences. When you have conferences and it's like, you know, some, a great group of speakers, you know, Rob's Business with Rachel Hollis and Dave Hollis, they did that. They brought like all the like top speakers in this one place and the transformation was amazing. And that's what happens when you bring people together. Number 14, how do you think your industry would be different 10 years from now? Um, I really don't know. You know, I'm sure, you know, things will, the technology will change. You know, there will be some things you have to adjust to. But hopefully, you know, it's a beautiful place where more people are into personal development. I really think that. I think more people are going to stop, you know, spending so much money going into debt, going to college, and actually investing in, you know, self-education. So I think that's going to be more the norm uh, when it comes 10 years from now. 15. What or who is the next best thing in the industry? <laughs> you're, <laughs> uh, you're looking at them. Nah, <laughs> nah seriously though, um, it just depends on, I, I don't know where y'all judging that from. Like, I think definitely I'm one of them. You know, if you wanna say, if I'm not there yet, uh, I just think I bring a different flavor to this space. And also, you know, I would say, you know, Rachel Hollis. You know, I think Rachel is a person that's doing it on a level that nobody really is doing it on right now, just from holistically wise. And it's beautiful, you know, what she's doing. So, yeah.